So this is, this is Garrett. Garrett's a, a really good friend of mine. They happen to make car parts. And this this is kind of a special one. I don't know who gave me a credit card to buy this, but I did it anyways. <laughs> because we're in America. And that's what you can do. And this week on Monday Mods, this weekend, this special edition on Monday Mods, we are turboing my 2016 Subaru BRZ. Is this a good idea? Yes. Is this a good financial idea? No, but we're doing it anyways. And we're gonna make more power, baby! It does look good in that lighting though, I'm not gonna lie. That kinda looks nice. As of right now, we just disconnected the battery. Um, we're getting the table set up so we can kinda just lay out all of our parts. Especially with something like this, where there's a lot of things going in, coming out. We want to be organized. I mean, there's no sense in just throwing shit all over the place if we don't know what we're doing. So, he's getting the table set up and ready. Then we're about to jack up the car. We're gonna take the wheels off. Just because it's gonna be easier for us to get this front bumper off in order to put the bash bar on, get the slim fans in, and kind of just work. So, as of right now, that's what our game plan is. Coming at three ton, low profile. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing over there, brother? <laughs> <laughs> Just crack that thing. Don't tell Melissa. Yeah, I hate those little anchors. Dude, so annoying. They're way too big. Said no one ever. <laughs> <laughs> How about the motion of the ocean? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's what people yeah, smart dicks say. <laughs> Just put that right on the oil pan. <laughs> oh, honestly. <laughs> Wait, is that not what you're supposed to do? No, seriously, no, don't, don't do no, that. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you had me going, dude. You have been doing that the whole time. <laughs> so now that the bumper's off, um, we can now continue to drain the oil because we have an aftermarket oil pan. Um, it has a little bung already welded into it just because we're going to need an oil return line to come off of the engine, cool the turbo, lube the turbo, and then go back in the pan. And then also, we gotta put some, what's it, RTV gasket maker, whatever you wanna call it. We'll put that up there. Anthony said it doesn't have to cure, but. No, it'll be all right. It'll okay. be okay. Well, anyway. I never let one cure. Oh, okay, cool. So even better. So what we'll do is we'll drain the oil and then we'll throw that up on there. I guess we'll figure out from there. Okay, that's the gasket maker. So we'll need that. I have some T fittings. Just because I'm not 100% sure what we might need to tee in terms of like boost and up to the gauges and stuff like that. I know there's at least one or two tee fittings already in the kit. This is a JDL kit, by the way. Um, the turbo I'm running is a G GT2860 RS. I also have a flex fuel kit. I'm getting mine tuned by Zach from uh, CSG. Shout out to Zach. And shout out to Kevin Kett for hooking me up with like the clutch and everything and the brakes like that. This is the oil pan that I was talking about under all oh, this stuff. This is all like the piping and stuff. So let me dig this out real quick. And it is a recirc kit, so it's not going to be ter too terribly loud, but we're going to be able to hear. Let's go ahead and take this out. I haven't taken this out yet, so let's check this out. You can already see like the welded bung that's in there, which is super nice. Man, that's a that's a nice. That is pretty nice. That's nice. I did not sweet. think I would like an oil pan. I know. But I like it's it. like gloss. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't. You got down yeah. There. So I am going to drain the coolant. There's a pitcock on the side of the radiator over here, but the way they designed it, it would just make a huge mess. So we're just going to attach a hose. We'll drop it into our drain pan. We'll pop the radiator cap open so that way it gets good airflow and drains it all out. Back. Yeah. That it's black. This is the I intercooler. Was we weren't supposed to mix. And originally, uh, I thought I was it was gonna be like, to like just regular color. like alloy color. Uh, the I don't think I ordered the hair <laughs> coat, but I got it, and I was like, <laughs> oh. it looks fucking. Good. Oh yeah, it looks great. I love the JDL logo in the middle yeah. of it. Like uh, that looks. All right, so right now what we're doing to free up some space and we got to be able to access the oil pan, we're actually taking oh, dude, off the dumb. under tray. Uh, so there's going to be five um, steel bolts that you got to loosen. They're uh, 14 millimeter. And then usually you'll have six plastic fasteners, uh, three on each side. You'll just have to take those fasteners out and then the, the pan will drop straight down. So right now uh, we just drain the oil. 
Um, but in order to take the oil pan off, we have to take the headers off, which we needed to take the headers off anyway, so that's what we're doing right now. Uh, this is the last bolt right here, and always wear safety glasses. <laughs> you're because you're good. No, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just dodging shit right now. Here you go. So it looks like Brandon's got all the oil pan bolts out. Oh, that's gonna come off real nice. Oh, yeah. Keep working all the way around. There you go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> a really important step once you have the pan off is to make sure you clean the surface the mating surface where the new pan goes that way once that gasket goes on um, everything can mate up super nice and you won't have to worry about any leaks there's some people that use uh, razors you can do that I got Scotch Bright. I heard Scotch Bright uh, works a little better. Um, and then you know, just just check around here and make sure there's no like like other older sealant around here. Try to take all that bullshit off. Um, probably some rubbing alcohol wouldn't hurt either. Um, I got something better, Brandon. You're gonna love it. Oh my god! Ah shit! And I got it turned down to ten thousand RPM. Hell oh, yeah! Even better. Listen. This is first world technology right here, baby. <laughs> Do it to it. All right. Um, oh, you. yeah. And always what? always wear safety glasses <laughs> or else you'll be yeah. fucked. Keep your mouth closed. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, that's the first one. Nice shot. Dude, Holy shit. Holy shit. I know. <laughs> no, not like that. <laughs> You're fucking kind. I'm just kidding. Man. It don't even have. To, listen, once you push it up on there, you can move it around a little bit if you need to. It'll be fine. There you go. Those balls have to go in the same spot so they came out. <laughs> I fucking hate these up. <laughs> you didn't mark them first. I hope I put enough gasket in You did. You, you probably put too much on there. You probably did what they do at the Toyota dealership. Uh -oh. and Is that going to be bad? No, I'm just fucking with you. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, oh no. <laughs> it's probably fine. Do we need to torque those? Yeah, eventually. Do, do we you need, need to have torque a small those? torque wrench or do you just want to snug it? Oh my god, I can't believe we're going to use it again. <laughs> I'm so fucking excited. Dude, that's what I'm saying. I'm so fucking excited. <laughs> Where's it at? It's somewhere. It's somewhere. Hold on, let me find it. What the fuck? Where's that? There it is! There it is! We're gonna use oh, this son of a thing. bitch again. Oh my god. This is from the fucking first Monday Mods Hell video yeah. ever. Hell yeah. Here we go. All right, real quick guys. So uh, I wanted to take some of the useless pieces off of the BRZ. Um, to take this off, very simple. Two 10 millimeter screws there and there. And that was located right here. We're not gonna need the factory air box or snorkel tube. So of course there's two clamps, one here and one around this area. Those were eight millimeters. And then I just detached this. We may or may not reuse this elbow later on. And then there was just a couple of 10 millimeter bolts um, for the factory air box. There was one here, here and then one down here and there was also a little bracket um that one of those bolts went into there was a 12 millimeter bolt that bolted that to the frame we just removed that bracket as well all right guys so next i'm gonna remove this crash bar right here and it looks like it's pretty easy especially with uh everything we've got removed here it's gonna be four 12 millimeter bolts on each side over here, this one might be a little bit more complicated. We might have to remove the washer fluid reservoir. I just need to kind of move the washer tank out of the way a little bit. The best way, take this panel retainer out and then you can dislodge the, the top part. And then there's two 10 millimeter bolts, one right there and one right there. Take those out and then you can lift this up. You can see you just gotta lift it up out of this hole right here. 
and then you can push it out of the way enough to get to the bottom two bolts right there. All right, right now me and Brandon are gonna go ahead and replace the injectors and install the E85 kit. And on the passenger side, um, I've already removed the ECM, which was pretty simple. There was a 10 millimeter bolt here, a 12 here, and I removed the electrical connectors, which were a little bit weird at first, but I'll show you how I did it. Um, I just pushed down on this tab right here where my thumb is and that kind of like unlocked it and then this piece here you just pull up and it will unlock and pull out the connector and there's three of those and then there's a standard um, flat connector here. And then on Brandon's side here, it uh, looks like we've got there's a 12 a, on the front one. 12 right down there. Oh. Damn. Down Don't there. drop your tools. <laughs> Cut. That'll be down there when you need it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so anyway, <laughs> Brandon, on the driver's side, first we need to remove this plate, which has a 12 millimeter bolt right down there. And a 10 millimeter bolt right back there. And we also need to disconnect the fuel lines to install the E85 kit. Oh, that was my other bolt. Oh wow, that came out of there real easy. This part's pretty simple. I went ahead and disconnected the electrical connectors. And I, you can leave this connected. Take out the two 12 millimeter bolts on the rail. And then on this side, you can just lay this over like that right there. And replace your injectors. Factory injector on the left, 1050 injector on the right. We were at first a little bit concerned about the gap here where this O-ring is. Um, it doesn't seem like it's gonna be a problem, even though there's no gap for the O-ring to move around too much on the original one. This one seems like it will be fine. Um, and we also noticed the difference between um, how this protrudes into the intake and this one does not. Again, that doesn't seem to be an issue. Once you remove the fuel rail, there's actually a little rubber gasket you need to remove before you install the new injectors. Yep. Oh, there we go. There it is. You'll be able to feel if it seats, right? Yep. Oh, it goes in just about all the way. You don't want to force it because you can cut the O-ring. And that's all that holds the injectors in there. The two bolts that hold the rail on will actually hold the injectors in there. Okay, put this back down. Okay, and then... There's a part on this fuel line that goes into this little slot on the intake. Make sure that gets in there. Next, we have the adapter harnesses for the injectors because the aftermarket injector connector is not necessarily designed specifically for this engine. They make one connector and then they make multiple adapters so that they engineer one injector and multiples of these because these are very cheap. There's a little tab right there. That's what locks into the lock on the connector. So it's gonna be on the same side as the lock. Push it in there until it clicks. And then plug each of these into their injector. I know it's kind of hard to see down here, but you get the idea. Just about got that one. There, you go. there we go, okay. Connecting our fuel pump. We we basically just took these and tucked them in um, so that they seated flush underneath the fuel rail cover. Okay. Um, and there was nothing intruding that area and you don't have a chance of like a wire getting caught on something. Dude. Fuel injector's done. We just did injectors. Yeah. Bro, yeah. dude, that's fucking awesome. Night one. Good shit, Fuck good yeah. shit. Let's do it. All right, Brandon, what do we got going on over here? Uh, I just mounted the, the little sensor for the delicious tuning kit. Um, I don't know how to do it, so YouTube is a great source <laughs> in order how to do it. I'm not trying to do this thing wrong. This. I mounted it wrong. No, I mounted it right. Okay, cool. Cool, yeah, don't, don't, right. listen. Confidence, don't ever doubt yourself. Hell yeah, <laughs> stay in school. So these are your fuel rails. Um, this is a little sensor. 
So basically what happens, once you have this mounted and once you have that disconnected, you'll put this end on this side of the sensor. I'm guessing you want to hear a snap. Ooh, there you go. And then you have your sensor and it's literally the same thing. You'll plug that in, snapped in perfectly. And then depending on just how you want to route this, I'll probably go under here. You might have to bend it a little bit, which is fine. Boom, just like that. And then this will go right here, but I'm not gonna mount it yet just because the guys have this little bar taken off. Um, I just kind of want to have everything seated. I'll just probably just move that to the side until you guys put that back on, but it's not gonna hurt anything. But that's basically like the first couple of steps just to mount this, put the fuel rail on. Um, the next thing I'm gonna think about doing is like mounting, mounting the actual module. Okay, well that's gonna go right there. Pretty freaking simple. You just put this little thing in here. Just kidding, it doesn't go in there. It goes that way. <laughs> it looks good, dude. Sits in that groove, and then that V-band will go on like that. Okay. And then we'll just rotate it, depending on mm -hmm. kind of where we where want it. There we go. That's close. All right, so on this step, uh, we're actually going to be replacing the PCV hose right here. Um, in order to do that, you need to remove the AC compressor. So take off the belt, and then there's uh, just a couple connectors, pretty straightforward. And then three bolts on the AC compressor, two on the front and one in the back. And then you're gonna take this clamp off, this hose on the right, and replace it with the hose included in the kit. And that is gonna connect to the intake tube before the turbo. All right, here we've got the original OE Subaru radiator fan versus the Spal 909s. Aluminum, shroud, direct fit. They bring in a ton of air to the radiator, so. Pretty sick, I mean, I like the, yeah, the it's finish legit. and construction. And they and make everything. a bigger version. Of it. They make like two levels bigger than this too. Mm -hmm. And you can see here that um, the OE fan has a couple snaps as well as a couple screws, but these snaps actually retain it to the radiator. And you can see that this fan has got that right there as well. It's even got some standoffs. This right here is where the OE coolant overflow tank will mount. Now, I don't know about this connector, if we have to wire those in or not, sure it looks like we might. All right, Jeff, you want to explain what we got over here? So right now, because we have to wire in the cooling fans, they don't have a connector that connects directly to the vehicle harness. We're just going to test which wires are powering ground on the vehicle and then which wires are going to control or which polarity we need the fans to be. Um, so I'm just hooking up the battery with some jumper cables really quick so that I can test for power and ground on the vehicle harness and then we can make sure the fans blow the right direction. Okay. Um, suck instead of blow. Wait, suck, squeeze, bang, and blow? Yeah, something like that. Um, I'll suck and squeeze you, bro. I saw that. Never mind. Hey, I give you full permission to cut them bitches. You heard it here first. Yep. You heard it here first. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and cut both of these OE connectors off. We're not going to be needing those. <laughs> and then I'm going to cut these off as well. That doesn't seem like it's going to be long enough. But am I right that that doesn't seem like it's going to be long enough? Yeah, because this is going to have to go all the way over there. Do you have any wire? Wire? Yeah. Or wait, we can steal the wire off the old one if you don't have it. True, we can. Only got about 12 inches. No, we should have just fucking used that connector now. Honestly, it makes sense. <laughs> just use the whole thing. Yeah. It's too late now. Why? Where are you fucking cut it off the car? Oh, that's true. <laughs> I can't use it now. Here. Oh, you guys couldn't just plug it into each other? Right, well, because we well, this one, that. this one is 
a no-go, but this one could have came off and we could have reused it. We didn't know that we would be stealing this piece anyway. Because we thought that the wires on there were long enough. I need to strip these. Done some heat shrink to put over the harness here just to make it look a little bit nicer. We'll have these connectors on here and I just wanted a little sleeve of heat shrink right there. Just stick a piece of this on there. Doing this so it looks nice. What I'm doing right now is just pulling back the insulation here and then I'm gonna strip these back and test the fans. I'm gonna connect them to the battery and see which way they blow. That way we can make sure we have the polarity right. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> it works. All right, <laughs> unhook sure. that one for me, would you? Ultimate leaf blower. Unhooked. Leaf All right, I'm gonna do this for this one too, just to make sure. All right. Let me know Red when you're ready. Red on blue. It's like blue on black. <laughs> That's a good song. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Oh yeah. You put it in oh. the bushes. <laughs> Where's the water at? <laughs> water. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, dude. Like, hooking me up, dude. ASE certified, baby. <laughs> he said, I do not mess around. So we got the uh, connectors running to the uh, fan control, which these are going to route directly to the fan wiring, which Jeff is rigging up right now. What am I doing? Zip tie. I have no idea. You're routing up the power to the fan. Yep. I'll put my leg right between yours. Oh. Ooh. Here we go. Mm-hmm. So I think this one's a little bit different. We're going to try to go in this way. Try to guide me around the manifold yeah. there. See, you pay for quality, you get quality. No. They could have made the thing just a little bit wider so that I don't have to use a screwdriver to get it to go together. But, I mean, at least you know it's secure and it's not coming out. Oh, yeah. I don't know why I'm going slow. <laughs> you can put it in slow. I don't, that way I don't have to poster. edit it into slow-mo. Oil feed line. Oil feed line for the turbo. Using an eight millimeter hex drive. So right now we're just taking the hot side off. Well, we can the mount it to the turbo, turbo manifold yeah. so we can put the dump pipe on. And then we can start kind of lighting everything up and get the plumbing done and get on the boost. Not yet, but close, we're getting there. Brandon is currently hooking up just the hot side of the turbo to the turbo manifold. And then that way we can install the turbo, hook up the lines. We will actually be able to pivot the turbo so that we can install the lines really easily. And then put the cold side on and clock it so that all the piping lines up and then tighten up all the bolts. Just to give you guys some perspective, Putting in these four bolts was the most difficult part of this turbo kit. That's how easy the whole setup has been so far. Yeah, I haven't even done anything. But that's normal. Right. <laughs> so Brandon is applying a little bit of blue Loctite to the four bolts on the hot side of the turbo to the manifold. And we are doing this before we install the turbo and the cold side because this bolt right here, you won't be able to access. What do you got going on, Brandon? So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking the cold side off of the turbo. That way I can take this and put it onto the hot side and kind of bolt everything up. And then um, I'm going to leave it loose enough to be able to swivel because we have oil and um, coolant lines in here that need to be at the right angle so they can flow properly. Oh, yeah. Let me know what you want me to hold. Hold that. Right there. I got something for you to hold. <laughs> you got it? Yeah. So it's still enough to spin. Looks like Brandon's got the oil oh, feed line God. started here. And you can see how you can clock this to get all the lines on there before you tighten everything down. <laughs> all 
I quite don't say it. Can't use that. I don't know if I need to put this up or down. This one I can't go down because there's a fucking exhaust there. So this one's gotta go up. All right, so you heard it here first. You heard it here first. Even if you're ASE certified, sometimes you don't know what you're doing, <laughs> but that's all right. God damn. I mean, <laughs> he's not wrong. <laughs> Even the smartest learn something new every day. The valves are all there, and obviously everything was machined. What do you think? That, that's got to be a bike, board. right? Yeah, mm, definitely. No, it's a Formula One car. <laughs> <laughs> it's an Indy car. <laughs> twist it. Pull. Grab it, dick it, twist it! Pop it. Twist it. Pull it. Come on, yeah, you fucking bitch. Twist it. All right, while Brandon is installing the cold side of the turbo, I'm gonna tell you what we did with the coolant lines and the oil lines while I'm at it. So the oil line uh, comes from right here. Uh, all this stuff was included in the kit from JDL. Uh, there's an AN fitting return line that goes down to the oil pan. The oil pan has um, a bung on it already. Mm -hmm. So, yep. So Which that's, that's an option from JDL. I mean, you don't have to get it like that, but I highly suggest you do unless you're a welder and you're able to do that. You can save right. some money, but I mean, I'm not. It so. was so easy that it was definitely worth getting the oil pan. Yeah. The coolant lines, so we ran ours just directly up like this and kind of behind the AC compressor underneath the connector for the throttle body. This one's the throttle body and this one is the crossover pipe. Basically, this little U-shaped hose that connects right here to the throttle body and the crossover pipe, just remove that and replace that with the turbo. So you're gonna have the turbo connected to where this was and then where this one was connected here. So we got the intake tube, mass airflow sensor in. I need the bigger. Uh, oh, okay. This tube. 6674. Spin on it. All right, I'm not gonna record you put that fucking clamp on. All right, Brandon, so tell me how things are going and what you're doing right now. So we're getting down to the needy freaking greedy. We're putting the intercooler on right now. We gotta do a little bit of drilling. There's a bracket that's down here, just to give it a little more support, because obviously when we're doing pulls against those five O's and freaking smoking tires and lighting fires. And losing. Uh, <laughs> just wait, dude. Just wait. Damn, man. Just wait. It's okay. It's okay, I'd rather him say that than me blowing up my engine. And I was like, why would you say and that? And that too. Yeah, knock on wood. Um, there's a bracket that's down here that we need to drill into um, at these two little bolts. You can see it down here. And really just the most important thing is to just get this thing lined up. At least for me, it might not be important for other people, but I want it to be as even and as straight and as good looking as possible. I don't want like a hitched intercooler. So yeah, that's where we're at. So we'll mark it, we'll drill it, and then hopefully it'll, um, it'll look good. Fingers crossed, so. We'll see. So what you need to do is what do the some clean. It's like you broke a level. You broke a level? <laughs> Are those supposed to come out? But then, do you know if the car's even level? Listen, the car's the car's close enough to level. Close okay. enough to level. Close enough that you have to use levels to level the intercooler, but not the car. The from the, on the recall jack stands. <laughs> One, two, three, four, so if it was off a tooth, it'd be leaning like a motherfucker. No, I wouldn't. Yes, it would. <laughs> I mean, maybe, but it looks pretty good. We got seven teeth on the passenger side, six teeth on the garage. Oof. So how do we know your garage tooth? floor's level? That's true. This level. I think it's not not put a level on the floor this way and this like, way. Well, make sure it's right. Like, well, excuse me, um, the Earth is rotating at approximately yeah. five thousand six hundred seventy-two thousand miles per hour. <laughs> We are currently I think it's 28,000. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't know. I just... Well, according to my guess, it's a half, half inch off. Ooh! Ooh! Oof. Ooh! Better calibrate your damn level. <laughs> uh, calibrate uh. this big piece. <laughs> 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 All right, God damn it. Oh, I, don't God. Know, I don't know what the degree of fall across like. Let's drill these fucking holes. Dude, your clamp. Yeah, well, I want to make sure that this clears it. Because if we push this down and then end up changing the geometry of the... 
intercooler, it's gonna be oh, I see. It's not this tight. This motherfucker's I like, it was tight. <laughs> tight. This motherfucker's like, yo, this shit's totaled. We can't do this anymore. <laughs> I didn't say that. I just so thought the, turbo, the clamp was the tight. The turbo needs to be clocked. The turbo needs to be clocked forward a little bit. It, here it comes. <laughs> here it comes. <laughs> 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 Looks like Anthony is mocking up the location for the oil cooler. 27 millimeter wrench. I'm using extension through the box end like a T-handle to torque that down. Now it doesn't need to be extremely tight. It basically just needs to be as tight as an oil filter. Got the sandwich plate all installed, new filter. We actually use the 45 degree fitting on this one. Uh, that seemed to fit best there. And we ran both those lines straight down. And then they actually come out right here. And you can see very nicely, you've got those ran along the crash bar. Right there into the oil cooler. <laughs> All right, quiet on set for a second. To protect. <laughs> Got to relocate this horn, which is originally mounted somewhere over here, to one of the bolts on the crash bar. All right, so I just kind of wanted to simplify some of the vacuum line routing and stuff. Part of the instructions say to cut this hose right here to install a T-fitting. There's a little uh, bump in it right here. That's actually the check valve for the brake booster. So you actually need to cut probably about halfway down. I would cut down a little bit further than we did here, just to give yourself some extra room. Um, below this, I would say probably about two inches below this um, bump right here would be fine. Basically from the blow off valve, you're gonna run this hose. We ran it all the way around the back and that tees in to the T fitting that you installed right here on the brake booster line. And then the wastegate, uh, since we are not running a boost controller, you're actually gonna use one of the fittings right here that's closest to the valve uh, and run that directly to the fitting on the turbo on the cold side right there. There is some other ports here. We actually just need to plug off all of these except for this one right here on the very end of the wastegate. We're going to vent that one to atmosphere, but we just put the nipple in there to try to keep out the dirt a little bit. All right, guys, I wanted to show everyone how we ran the Varus air oil separator because it took me probably about two hours to do some research and figure out how to do it. Now the routing for NA is going to be different than boosted. So starting from the left, this one is actually going to go directly down to where the factory PCV valve is underneath the intake, right down there. You're gonna remove that valve and then install this hose to the first fitting on the left. The original PCV hose that runs from the PCV valve right here under the back of the intake to the passenger side port on the intake, you're just gonna remove it, throw it away, cap this off. The second and third one are actually gonna tee together. You can see right here, we actually have these routed here to a T, and then they're gonna run all the way up and connect before the turbo. The fourth fitting on the far right is going to go right around here and connect to the fitting right underneath the AC compressor. Maybe it goes on the last? Yeah, because the reason is if you already have the negative on and you're tightening the positive and your wrench touches the frame, It'll short. you just shorted it out. Brandon, do you mind walking me through a little bit what you got going on? So right now I'm flashing the car back to the original file. Because you're actually getting rid of the open flash getting, tablet. Getting rid of the, the stage two plus tune. The first time you start up, what we're gonna do, is we're literally just gonna check you know, if there's any exhaust leaks or anything's leaking and food, like all of that. For 10 minutes, we're just gonna leave it idle. And then we're gonna drive around for 10, 15 minutes. And that's the two first logs we're gonna send. When you have VRZ FRS 8.6, basically what you do is you push in the clutch 
and you push in the gas at the same time and it will not start. All the way down. All the way down. We're basically using that to prime the oil and the engine and all that stuff. Are you ready? <laughs> Brandon, are you fucking ready, man? You got a fucking turbo. All right, you ready? Let's fire this thing up. Oh! All right. So we figured out the exhaust leak. So right there in between that little clamp, you can see that the wastegate is not fully seated flush with the turbo manifold. Let's see if we can't adjust that a little bit. You guys are just making some adjustments to the exhaust. We fixed the leak at the wastegate. Now we think we just got one on a flange back here. I think the bolts are maybe just a little bit loose. So sick, dude. Sounds so good. <laughs> 